Hi guys, and welcome back to the Super Data Science Series, where we're working with Seaborn to build a range of plots and visualizations. As a quick recap, in the last video, we ended up building a heat map and exploring the different facets, methods, and information related to constructing the heat map for this visualization and a couple other visualizations as well. In this video, we're actually gonna be working with Seaborn's swarm plot for our next visualization. The swarm plot is a great tool to use to see a better representation of a distribution of values. Although this type of plot does not scale well to large quantities of observations, for our data set, it's gonna work very nicely. This type of plot is also referred to as a bee swarm. So if you hear bee swarm, it's referring to the swarm plot. You can use NumPy straight Python objects, but as we have done and as it's recommended, we're gonna be continuing working with Pandas data frames. So with all of that being said, we can get started. And what's the first thing that we're going to do? We're gonna be working with an actual data set and we're gonna be working with the Pokemon data set. So you can grab it from the following link. If you navigate to this link here, you can download, go to download all, where you get the CSV, the comma separated values, and we're going to import it, go to upload, upload, after you unzip it, and let's set it up. So since we're using pandas, we need to set a new data frame. We don't want to call it something that we've called it before. So this will be our new data frame, or we actually, to clarify it even further, let's call it Pokemon data frame equals pandas read CSV and the name of the CSV, Pokemon.csv, and we can import it. We'll run it, and now we have it imported as Pokemon data frame. Now, since we're working with a new data frame, one we haven't worked with before, work with Pokemon, I'm sure all of you are excited to work with it. If you are not a fan of Pokemon, I'm sorry, we can think about it strictly in scientific and data related terms as comparing values. But what is one of the first operations that we have to do that I always recommend and something we've done before is that we have to get an idea of the data that we're working with. So try and think of what commands that you can run to get an idea of the representation of the data. First, you can run the data frame, the D types of the name of our data frame, Pokemon df.d types. We can run it. And with our D types, we can see we have the values for each of the columns. What would further help us understand this is actually being able to see the column and the values. What we can do for that is run the Pokemon DF, excuse me, Pokemon DF dot head in parentheses. Let's again use 10 as a sample, and we can see. Now this helps you understand your data because we can take the two representations here and we can further see what we're working with. We have the representations, the name, the type, total, HP attack, and etc. But this is going to help us build our swarm plot since we're going to be passing in certain values for comparison. The first thing we're going to be looking to compare is let's actually try and classify or group the type of Pokemon to see how the data is represented in the swarm plot. Now at this point, since we're working the same notebook as we've done throughout this tutorial, we have, and if you don't or you haven't, run the import statements again. We have everything imported, our import Seaborn, the matplotlib, our inline for Jupyter, the display, get caught up, and we have our data frame. So what can we do from here? Since we have everything ready to go, if you're not familiar with some of the parameters, you can always visit the documentation, find the seaborn.swarm plot, and the parameters are always very helpful to understand what we're working with. As this first plot is gonna be very simple because we're comparing the two values and the distribution of the values within the data set, we don't really need to specify too many parameters. What we need to do is run the following. We're gonna group our swarm plot. So SNS, as we imported Seaborn, should be getting very familiar as we kind of have to do the same process over for each plot. You always have to use the SNS to call Seaborn and the type of plot swarm plot, and we're going to use the X for our specific X values. We are looking to compare the type one, and we also want to compare, we're going to go with the attack to give it a value. Let's run attack, 
And with that, you can't just plot it because it doesn't know where the data is coming from. We have to also give it the data. The data is going to be equal to Pokemon data frame. Pretty simple, straightforward. And let's run this and get back our visualization. So, okay, we can see the data distributed in the visualization, but we have a slight problem, which is that it's not clear, it's very difficult to read. We can edit these parameters. But before we edit those, we can see the type in type one as the grass, the fire, water. There are various types that we're gonna actually clarify to bring up and we'll be able to visualize them better if we do the following. But before we do that, I want you to think, I'm gonna pause the video and try to come up with a method Again, we've done this before. How can you fix these? How can you get this to clarify? Or how can you get this to display more accurately? All right, so we're back. I hope you've come up with some ideas or you've scrolled up. If you didn't remember or you're not familiar or are jumping in, earlier in the videos, we edited and did something similar to display these values. So what we can do is, again, if you're not familiar, Seaborn's built off of matplotlib. So we can use plt x ticks and we're going to rotate we're going to set the rotation equal to 70. all right let's try that oh excuse me we don't want to just run that we kind of want to run it with our plot so let's set the rotation to 70 and we can see that it clarifies and we're actually able to see the values or the type one names we have all of our names here for each of the specific type ones and we see the distribution. And that's mainly Seaborn's innate power is to be able to draw these conclusions very simply by using the visualization library. You know, that's the main point of working with these visualizations is that we can infer these conclusions or we can infer and obtain further data on our analysis while we're running these visualizations. But one additional thing we can do to help out a little bit, let's use this cell here, scroll down. We can also edit the parameters. We're gonna use PLT again, matplotlib. And I almost did it again. Let's do it up here. PLT.RC params. Now, since we're working with parameters, it is a dictionary. We need to give it the X tick dot label size. Close parentheses. Close our dictionary and set it to 15. And from here, you can experiment with it further. If you want it bigger or smaller, you can always change the label size for the X tick, but this is just another option to make the visualization a little more clear. But great work so far. We have our plot, we have our swarm plot working, functioning as intended, grouping the different types of Pokemon. It's pretty interesting to see the grouping types. You can see some that are more scattered based on their attack values with the higher attack values that we can see here and here. These points, these are a little bit of an outliers in the data must be a specific or powerful type of Pokemon with the attack value. I mean, if we're comparing to the hit points or other values as well, but that's what we're gonna do next. We're actually gonna try and extend this, not this specific plot, but we're actually going to use the swarm plot to build further analysis. But let's take a moment, just wanna close this really quick so it doesn't get confusing. If you guys have any questions, comments, or ideas about using Seaborn and this data or other data, please always feel free to share them. But I want you to take a quick moment to think about another method in Seaborn and how you can obtain some further analysis not related to the swarm plot. We're going to run that before we build our next swarm plot just to give an additional sense of the Seaborn library. And with that, we're going to leave off as a homework challenge. I'm going to give you a hint. It involves drawing a line through the data to compare two values, two of our values in our data frame. It may start with the word linear. That's all I'm gonna say. So take a look at Seaborn's documentation if you wanna get a head start. If not, when we get back and jump into the next video, we're going to be resuming with the homework. And then we're gonna be extending again our swarm plot on top of another plot. And at this point, we can wrap it up. It might be a good idea to stretch the legs, grab some coffee, take a quick break. And as a final note or final notes, if you have any questions, please let me know. And as always, I'd like to remind to subscribe to the Super Data Science channel. It's just an incredible way to stay up to date with what's going on in the industry and anything data science related. I hope that you have learned a lot of information from this series thus far. 
the more plots and the more visualizations and more experimentation with Seaborn that you do, the more that you will learn. And we're going to move forward with this, and I will see you in the next one where we will continue working and expanding with the Seaborn library.